Hi, for this video, what we are going to do is construct a 95% confidence interval for high school seniors test score, SAT test scores. So what we have is the SAT scores of 12 randomly selected high school seniors are listed below, and we are told to assume the population is normally distributed. So with this one, because of the fact that what we can do with this data is we could find the mean of this data, um, what we are going to do is we want to come up with the population mean high school senior test scores. Um, so because we're dealing with mean, that tells us that we either are going to use the T interval or the Z interval. And for this one, in order to use the Z interval, remember you have to have the population standard deviation. So since they did not tell us the population standard deviation, we are going to use the T interval. And remember, for the T interval, um, you have to know the sample standard deviation or have to be able to find the sample standard deviation. You have to have a sample size that is greater than or equal to 30 or normally distributed. So we don't have... Um, we don't have a sample that is greater than or equal to 30, but it does say that we can assume that it is normally distributed. And then the last thing that's always important is that you have a random sample, and a random sample helps you to make it so that it's um, more likely to be representative of the entire population. So with this, um, I would use technology because remember for your formula, the formula for a T interval is you would take X bar and add and subtract your T star with degrees of freedom um, for one less than your sample size times the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of N. Or your textbook may also separate it where it says X bar minus E and tell you that the population mean is in between that X bar plus E where E is equal to TC times S divided by the square root of N. The textbook that I'm currently teaching from uses this one. Um, I've taught from a textbook that used one similar to this, so that's why I included both. Um, for this, in order to use this formula, there's some things that we have to know. So we have to know the sample mean. At this moment in time, we don't have the sample mean. So if you don't have technology, what you would have to do is add up all of these values and then divide by the number in your sample. I'm going to use technology in just a second, the TI-84, to help me find this value. It's much quicker. Um, same thing for the sample standard deviation. Remember that the sample standard deviation is the square root of the sum of each of our individual values minus the mean squared divided by the sample size in minus one. So for this one, if you have to do hand calculations, it takes a very long time because not only do you have to find your X bar where you add up all of these values and divide by 12 since our sample size is 12, um, you would have to then take each of the individual values, subtract the mean from that, square each of those, add up all of the squared deviations, and divide by your sample size minus one. So with this, it's just not practical to do hand calculations to find the sample standard deviation. The TC or the T star, whichever one you want to call it, um, remember that we would look at a table for this and we would have to have our degrees of freedom. Remember that the degrees of freedom is equal to N minus 1, so in this case it would be 11. And it relies on our um, level of confidence. For this one, if we go back to the top, it says to create a 95% confidence interval. So we would go to here and we would see that our 95% confidence interval is one point, that would be our Z score, but because we're dealing with a T, um, we would use 11 degrees of freedom, so we would go here, and it would be 2.201. So if we look at it, the 95% confidence is down here. The 2.201 is what we would be looking for. Okay, um, so, 
In order to use our formula, like I said, we do have to plug all of this information into our um, calculator. The only thing that I have right now is I have my T, so I could plug that in. And I have my sample size. I know that my sample size is 12. The other two values I'm going to get from my calculator. So I'm going to go back up here. These are the values that we would put in. Um, if you need to, you can pause the video and come back to this. Uh, after I show you, you can always reverse back to the data. Um, so let me open up my calculator. Remember that you would go in and you would put all of your information into L1. I already put all of my information in here and I have confirmed that I put it in correctly. So um, to get there, remember it's stat and edit. And then you just put all of your values in. So like if I were typing in, I would do the 1650 and hit enter. Um, if you had data in here, you would just hit clear to get rid of it. Once you have all of your data in and you know where your list is stored, you're going to hit stat and go over to tests. And we're using the T interval, so we're going to use option 8. Um, if you accidentally select the Z interval, it would ask you for your population standard deviation so you know you can't use that. So then we would go down, we would put in our confidence level, I put my information into L1, I can change that if I used a different thing, and then I just hit calculate. And on this screen, it will give me the mean, the standard deviation, and the interval. So I'm going to go ahead and write that information down. My mean was 1,722.5. My standard deviation is 192.123. And if I plug those values into here, I would have the 172.5 or the 1,722.5 plus or minus 2.201 with a standard deviation of 1.2123. And the confidence interval that was generated was 16.4 to 1844.6. And so we could say that with 95% confidence, the true or the population mean the mean of high school seniors SAT um, scores are between 1600 and 1845. As always, thanks for watching. Please continue to check out my content.